I'm going to stare at Ashley the entire time. <laughs> okay, we're live. Uh, this is the Google Hangout for our Environmental Safety and Occupational Health Management program here at the University of Finley. Welcome. Uh, sitting beside me here is Dr. Tim Murphy. He is the chair of the environmental program. Say hi, Tim. Hello. <laughs> we also have with us today a current University of Finley student, Derek Hill. He's sitting just off camera, and he'll be able to join us here in a couple minutes to answer any questions you might have. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to get started. Tim, why don't you just tell us a little bit about the environmental program? Um, the program is Environmental Safety and Occupational Health. Um, so the program allows students to get a career in any of those broad areas. Um, in the environmental arena, working for either companies or for agencies. Uh, health and safety arena, again, working for companies or agencies. And also emergency management areas. Uh, the students are basically taking basic science, layering over the top applied science, um, then on top of that, internships, which by the way for our students are paid internships, and then also the training classes that we offer. That combination makes the student very unique, which gives them the opportunity for a great career. And why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about, maybe from a high schooler's perspective, what exactly is environmental safety and occupational health manage management? <laughs> so the ESOH program, one of the things that we've been doing is going around and educating high school students as to what ESOH folks do. Um, as a, for a typical day, um, let's start with uh, health departments. If the student goes out and is working in a career in public health, either at the city or state or federal level, they're going to go out and they're going to work on public health issues. Uh, avian flu, um, outbreaks of other foodborne illness, um, inspections of restaurants, bars, um, depending upon the county or the city, they'll do a variety of other enforcement and inspection, and they really do a lot of consulting work. Um, a citizen has a question about public health issues, they can go to the local county health department and get that type of uh, information. If the student is going out and working for industry, say in the environmental area, um, they can focus on helping that industry to pollute less. So that includes doing air monitoring work um, to verify what it is that they are discharging. It includes uh, doing permitting work. Uh, you know, everything in a career, everything in a business is all about the paperwork. Um, so they compile paperwork, they file the paperwork, they submit it to the state and the federal agencies uh, because they have a permit to discharge certain amounts of pollution into the air. Okay, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask here, or you can tweet your questions to at ufinley, hashtag askuf. So feel free to do that. We are monitoring that to take your questions. Um, Derek, why don't you come sit in and you can introduce yourself. Like I said, Derek Hill is a current University of Finley student majoring in our environmental program. How's it going? I'm, uh, I'm actually in my fifth year right now in the ESOH program. Uh, reason being is I've actually taken on four co-ops throughout my, uh, my degree. Um, one in my sophomore, one in my junior, and uh, two throughout my senior year. <coughs> and uh, three of them uh, being with different companies and the fourth being with the third company that I was working with previously. Um, all my internships uh, were paid, which was one of my first incentives that when I was looking at the ESOH program, kind of turned me on to the major. Um, and I was making upwards of anywhere from 18 to $20 an hour, which is pretty nice for a college student. Uh, helps pay the bills, that's for sure. And you get a great learning experience when you're on these internships. Um, you know, there's a certain learning aspect you get when you're in the classroom, but when you go outside and you actually get to experience it hands-on, it's completely different. And you get a, the learning experiences, um, is, it's kind of like a wake-up call almost because you see it in the classroom and you understand it, but when you actually go out and do it, it's, it's a whole new world. So. Okay. So if we don't have any questions, you guys can keep talking about more about the program and um, maybe what are some cool things that you've done um, maybe 
some projects or anything in the classroom uh, might be interesting to share with the students? Um, well, one of the things that makes our program unique is the fact that we have a variety of hands-on training classes that we offer for college credit that the students get to take. Um, and these are classes that uh, we take out at our off-site training facility. Um, probably one of the most popular one is our emergency response class. During this class, students talk about and learn about the risk of chemical and biological accidents or chemical and biological acts of terrorism. So they learn how to identify what the hazard is, and then they learn how to identify how to protect themselves and protect the public, um, how to put on and take off all the different hazmat suits, like you see on TV, the moon suits, and then we go out and we do exercises uh, at the training facility in that gear. So we'll run through exercises such as leaking containers in a semi-truck, uh, you may have seen semi-trucks on the side of the road with fumes coming out of them. Um, that's some kind of a chemical leaking from those containers, and the students learn how to handle those. We also teach them how to handle things that they would see in industry, uh, leaking pipe racks, leaking drums, leaking tanks, that type of thing. Uh, we have flipped over railroad out there that we can put water and pressure to so that the students learn how to handle that type of a disaster. One of the uh, one of the another cool aspect about our major, from a student's perspective, is the communication with our professors. Um, professors like Dr. Murphy and a few of our others in the major um, that we can go to almost any time of the day or night if we have a question. They all give us their personal cell phone numbers. So when we're having trouble in class or outside of class, whether it be a school-related problem or just a personal issue, and you need to talk to somebody, our professors are always there for us. And the classroom environment's a lot nicer too because, you know, when you go to a larger school and you have two to three hundred people in a lecture hall, it's hard to get that attention that some people need. And I'm a person that asks a lot of questions in class. So I have no problem raising my hand every five minutes if I don't understand something in class. And I feel comfortable doing that because of the classroom size. And I think we average in our ESOH classrooms in between 15 and 20 students about. That's correct. And it's nice, too, also because those 15 to 20 students are your friends. So you feel comfortable sitting in class, raising your hand, and asking questions. And, you know, when you're outside the classroom, you can all get together and work on a project together or study for that midterm that you have coming up. Um, but it, the ESOH program and all is just a big family, and you can't ask for something better than that. Can we get Ashley to introduce herself to Sure, you? yeah, yes. go for it. <clears throat> Hi there, my name is Ashley. I am in the graduate program, the Environmental Safety and Health Management uh, graduate program. I picked that up, actually I decided to join my senior year. I graduated from UF with animal science, but I found our ESOH program a little too late. So I finished my major and got in on the boat for the uh, master's degree. So I'm pretty happy with everything and how it's going. I also work for Dr. Murphy as his graduate assistant. Um, there's a lot of other options for work as an ESOH student. We have an environmental resource room. Um, it's a, like a computer lab and all of our ESOH students are employed there so they can make a little bit of money on the side while they're when they're not in classes. Um, tell them how many of the undergraduate classes did you take? Um, I think I took about five, four or five of the major undergraduate classes that were core classes. Uh, I picked those up, even though that wasn't my degree, uh, just to get a head start into the master's program. I took uh, the 100 level class, Environment and Society. I took two important law classes, uh, policy classes, that taught me a lot about OSHA regulations and EPA laws and regulations that a lot of these co-ops and internships that Derek was talking about really want you to know. Those are important things to get a head start on knowing before when you go out into work for as an environmental manager. It's a nice knowledge base you get uh, mm -hmm. from the classes like that. Because when you go out there, you know, like I was saying earlier, 
you think you know everything you know, but really it's a whole new experience. So you get the knowledge base that you need, and then you go on and learn further from there. Derek, can you tell them about your first internship, the one that you did all the sampling on? Yeah. Um, actually, <clears throat> Dr. Murphy sends out emails probably almost every day, uh, in between two and three emails every day about job postings, internship postings, co-op postings. Um, I'm a really picky person on like what I, what I like to do. So um, when I was looking for my first co-op at the end of sophomore year, I wasn't seeing anything that I really wanted to do. Um, so I said, you know what, I'm going to go out and find something myself. And the day after we got out of finals, I was flipping through a Cleveland magazine and came across just an ad, and it says, environmental problems, we got you covered. So I called the number and I said, hey, do you guys do co-ops? And they said, we sure do. So I went in for an interview. Next day I got a call saying that I had my first co-op over the summer. So I worked from May to August. And what I basically did was I was an environmental technician uh, for a uh, sampling, consulting uh, firm in the Cleveland area. And what they did was, before I even started working for them, <coughs> excuse me, was they had me trained in asbestos. So when I went out and um, on a job, I knew what kind of materials I was going to be looking at more, more so than the things I've learned in the classroom. So you get the, I got additional training that was probably valued well over $2,000 for free through my co-op. And that's another certificate that I work, walk, out at, walk out with after graduation. But um, I did anything from water sampling to hazardous waste sampling, um, asbestos abatement sampling, um, anything like that. So I was always out in the field um, doing something. And it was a lot of fun because, honestly, I spent about 35 out of my 40 hours a week outdoors um, going to different buildings. And those other five hours was spent in a weekly meeting with my boss going over the things that I did all throughout that week. Um, and that was a really good experience. I made pretty decent money as well. And the nice part was is it was only 20 minutes from home, so I got to live with my parents over the summer to save even more money. Okay, we do have a couple of questions. Uh, Libby Wagner is wondering, what are typical locations within the country that students can do internships? Everywhere. Oh, everywhere. A lot of our students get internships right here in Ohio, um, but they'll take students from our program across the country. We have had... Um, Libby, this is Dr. Murphy. I'm off camera. But we have had internship opportunities coast to coast. Um, last summer we had students um, from Atlanta, Georgia, all the way to Northern California, and from Lubbock, Texas, up to the Boston area, and of course lots of them in the greater Midwest. So companies across the country know about our program and ask about our students. Uh, we also have internships with a couple of Fortune 100 firms, such as BP, Marathon Oil, Owens Corning. Uh, we're just starting a new relationship with Ford Automotive. Uh, so those internships anywhere in the U.S. My roommate last year, actually, too, he, within 18 months, lived in Louisiana, Ohio, Texas, and Georgia, was it, I believe? He lived in four different states with all varying climates and varying conditions, and he loved it, at every bit of it. it was, he had a lot of fun, you, and you learn a lot. And that goes for careers, too, not only internships. Right. Our students get placed across the country. And it's your choice, obviously. You don't have to be forced mm -hmm. into going anywhere. Like right now, I'm specifically looking, uh, when I graduate in May, into moving out into the Santa Monica area in California. And that's the beauty of it, too. Like We get a lot of choices as to where we want to work and what we want to do. We have 100% job placement out of our undergraduate program. We have another question, a uh, student wondering, can we make our internships with international companies? Um, the student is from Ecuador, and uh, they said it would be nice to make an internship during a summer at home. Yes. As a matter of fact, you can. Uh, the internship process that we use nowadays because so much of the paperwork is transmitted electronically that long as the company provides the information that we require, which is a offer letter uh, with a job description, learning outcome, salary, start date, end date, uh, and who the mentor is going to be, yes, we can do internships uh, with companies that are outside of the United States, absolutely. Um, and Libby Wagner has asked another question. She's, she said she's actually talked with you before about VP scholarships. Um, she wants to know, would you recommend any good scholarships within the 2.5 to 3.0 GPA range? 
Well, there are some new scholarships that the University of Finley just announced the other day. Some of those are in that 2.7 to 3.0 um, range. Um, other ones are uh, most counties have a uh, county educational office uh, that you can talk to them and they'll have links to a variety of different uh, scholarship applications. Um, and then of course you can look at different industries. They may have scholarships, especially local industries that are in your hometown or in your home county. They may have scholarships um, that are good at any university or are good in particular at a uh, Ohio University. So those are some of the options. And uh, to put on to that also, um, there's scholarships that don't require a GPA. Um, I myself, um, coming out of high school, had about a 3.0, and you know, there's the, the students that excelled a little bit higher than me, but I went out and I looked for scholarships that weren't related to GPA. Like my city had a scholarship for being an environmental student in the state of Ohio. So I was the only environmental student out of the city that I was from back in Cleveland, and I got a $1,000 scholarship for that. And then on top of that, I have a $500 scholarship for just being a snowboarder. Silly things like that, if you're left-handed, you can find any type of scholarship online, anywhere ranging from $100 to $1,000, and that covers that, hey, that's, that's a semester of books right there that will help you out any which way. Don't pass on the small scholarships. Um, personally, one of my own children uh, spent uh, the spring of her senior year looking at scholarships, and she didn't go after any scholarship that was more than $1,000, and by the end of the summer, she had $10,000 worth of additional scholarships because she just went after ones that she thought other people weren't going after. Yeah, we can probably have you squeeze in. Oh, definitely. Should be able to see all three of you. Yep. <laughs> oh, we like each there other. <laughs> So can you guys talk a bit more about, uh, since we're kind of talking about that now, the relationship that you have with your students and um, I guess the, the personal attention that you guys feel like you get from the professors here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm, Dr. Murphy was the reason why I came to this major. Um, my personal experience, to sum it up quickly, I was uh, coming here on a high school visit day. I was looking at actually being uh, doing something in forensic science, criminal justice. Uh, I watched a lot of CSI, so I thought that was really cool. And I came here, and Dr. Murphy, there was a huge line for the criminal justice booth. And Dr. Murphy came up and nudged me on the arm. He said, hey, why don't you come check this out real quick? And I was like, okay. So I just walked over, not knowing anything what, you know, what I was looking at. Sure enough, I come out with 10 pamphlets, talking to him. I have a meeting set up the next day. I went to our off-site facility. And I think a week or two later, I signed up. Uh, I was in the ESOH program and starting my freshman year. And ever since then, Dr. Murphy has been kind of like that. Uh, the father figure to me at the university, you know, whenever I need something, he's the person I go to, uh, along with the other professors that I, I feel comfortable enough to just ask a question and be like, hey, I need your advice on this, or um, hey, I need help on this assignment, where do I go from here? And they might not give you that direct answer because they obviously want to give you a challenge, but they're going to put you on the right path. That's right. When I was in the animal science program, um, we have great professors in there too, but I was always quieter, kind of sat in the back, didn't really want to get to know anybody, or at least my professors. I didn't ask questions, I let things go. Um, but when I took the 100 level environment and society class, uh, Professor Wilkinson was my teacher, and I really opened up to him. Uh, one of the first teachers in all of my schooling that I ever really opened up to came to him and said, I really like this stuff. And I said, what can I do now? And he's the one that brought me into the program and got me going with the career that was correct for me. And I feel like, too, uh, what I was going to say, you know, she, she opened up to Professor Wilkinson. Professor Wilkinson always is also the one that's going to make you open up. Our teachers aren't going to let you sit there and be quiet the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to make sure that they know who you are, that they know your likes and dislikes, and they're going to get to know you just as well as you want to get to know them. And they want to help you as much as you want help from them. So... In our program, because most if not all of us have experience out in the field before we came to the university and still get experience out in the field, we understand that part of the learning comes from outside of the classroom. And so part of our job is the life lessons all the time. Um, something's wrong, 
that happens, we can turn it into a learning moment so that people can learn from it. And as Derek and Ashley both pointed out, we're not going to let people slide. We, we care enough about our students that we're going to get in their face and ask them what's going on and ask them to participate because we want students who can take the concepts that we teach them and apply them to any situation out in the working environment. I always say that by the time you leave, we'll know who you are, what you drive, who you're dating, and we've probably had a conversation or two with your parents that you don't even know about. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially Do I not Derek. know about something? <laughs> well, I've been, well, I've been here for five years, so. so but, but it is close knit. Derek had used the term family earlier. Yeah. Um, one of my jobs, and it's a personal job that I have with the freshmen, my goal is to get them to be a family. Um, I use both the word team and family uh, in that freshman class. You know, team members, they've all got the same goal, and so they're working towards that goal, but they don't always necessarily have each other's back. Family members have each other's back, and they may not necessarily always be going in the same direction. I want the students to do both. I want them to go in the same direction, that is to get their degree and move on to a great career, but I want them to have each other's back no matter what, to take care of each other, and that's what we really try to do here. And what's also cool is, um, you know, as a freshman, I was kind of a little bit more closed-minded to things. Um, I was kind of a little bit quiet. And obviously, Dr. Murphy helped me open up a little bit more. But one of the other cool things that we do is we do a mentoring program. So all the freshmen have a mentor to go to all in the senior class. So as soon as you come in, you're assigned a mentor, and that's your go-to person that you're supposed to feel comfortable with. And that, you know, if you have a question that you may not feel comfortable enough to ask an advisor, or a friend, or a teacher, or whoever, you go to that person, and whether it's about homework or personal life, you can go to them and talk to them about that, and they're going to give you the best advice possible. And I've been doing the mentoring program for two years now, because I've been a senior for two years, um, due to my <laughs> co-ops. But uh, but yeah, and it, it's, it's really cool, because you have that person that you can look up to, and actually, uh, my mentor, I still talk to probably once a month, even though they graduated four years ago. So... I really like all the students in this program. Even though I wasn't there from the start as a freshman, I was welcomed in with open arms, definitely. Yeah. Why don't, why don't the both of you, I guess, talk about your experience, maybe what you thought environmental was, and then once you got into the program, what you realized, okay, this is really what environmental safety occupational health management is. Definitely. I had no idea what it was. And I've been into environmental things since I was in high school. Like, I recycled, I would read the books. but. I got here, I was in the animal science, I did pre-vet, I did equestrian, I changed my major three times. Um, and I saw that we had an environmental safety and occupational health program, but that safety and occupational health thing, I was like, that's not what I want, I don't know what that is, that's definitely not what I want to do. Um, so I just passed it by and I kept ignoring the program that was right in front of me at my school. Um, but then coming into it, like I said, that first class we learned about uh, air quality, water quality, we learned about human health on top of, it's, it's all the same thing and they put it together into one major with the ESOH program. Um, for me, I definitely was confused at first because I thought this major was going to be stuff that blows up and having a green thumb. So I was like, well, okay, this sounds cool. But um, in all reality, um, I, I was really biased when I first came into this major and I all I want to do all environmental and now after doing my four co-ops um, I'm strictly safety based um, I want to go the safety route I want to be making sure that everyone goes home safe to their families every single day and on my last co-op um, I can honestly say that I helped save someone's life on one of my last days of work and it was kind of cool because I you could pat yourself on the back and say hey that guy got to go home to his family today when Maybe if I wasn't there, if I, you know, if I never looked into this major, you know, he could have lost his life. And on a daily basis, you're saving lives without even knowing it. One of the things that we always talk about with our program is that it's preventative medicine. Mm -hmm. If our students who are into the environmental area go out and do their job, they are working with companies to lessen pollution. 
which means there's less asthma, there's less anthropogenic cancers, there's less of a lot of other problems that are out there. So you have less need to go see a medical doctor. I kind of like that. Um, those students that are doing their job as safety, as Derek had just pointed out, then those employees are going home with all their fingers and toes, and they're going home without hurting their back or twisting their hips, and therefore you don't have a need for orthopedic surgeons, for chiropractors, for physical rehab, those types of things. I'm a believer in chiropractic and physical therapy because I use it um, because I'm getting old, I guess. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's nice when you can prevent people from having health problems by working with the environment, working with companies to provide a safer workplace. And one other thing that I discovered too is when I first came into this major, everything that, that the one thing that's always just shoved in your face and you made, made sure it's known is it's 100% job placement. And I didn't truly understand that until you get out into the field and you're like, wow, you, there's a lot of health, safety, and environmental jobs that need to be filled. Um, I worked in a facility with 495 people. I was one of two safety people. We probably could have used seven more. Um, there's there's always something that needs to be done. Every, there's, it's preventative maintenance. It's like working on your car. As long as you do the preventative maintenance, it's going to run strong. That, that, that's like a facility. If you do the preventative maintenance in a facility to make sure that all the health, safety, and environmental regulations are met, you're going to have a smooth running facility. In fact, today I had three new jobs sent to me by companies that I had never heard of before that now know about our major and I passed out I guess I sent two of them out to the students. The third one I didn't send out yet because I got it right before I walked in here. We're averaging 100 new jobs per year for our students. This year we'll graduate 15 students. Next year we'll graduate less than that. Then the following years we'll start graduating back up around 25 to 30 every year. So we have on average three jobs per student every year. We do have a question from the same student that asked about the international mm -hmm. um, internships. I didn't know if you knew of any, any about this, but um, international scholarships. Are you aware of maybe some of those scholarships your international students have? I, I, I don't um, because so many of the international students that we have are funded by their home country. The Saudi Arabian students that we have are funded by their home country. Um, the Indian students at the undergraduate level are also. Um, we currently have one, um, I guess he's from Brazil, freshman, um, and he is not on scholarship that I know of, but I haven't asked him. Uh, so I'm not really familiar with that. Uh, best bet is to check with the host uh, home country to see what they have, um, and then also take a look at some of the companies that have locations in both your home country and in the United States. Because you may find that that company, because they need health and safety and environmental people back in their home country, might be willing to provide scholarships for the high quality education that we provide here at the University of Finland. And Libby said, 100% job please, but my whole family cheers for that. <laughs> <laughs> Libby, I understand and tell your parents I understand because I have four of my own, well, they were college age, and um, almost all of them have graduated. Some of them have jobs and some do not. Those that do not were not in the environmental field. <laughs> <laughs> She's also wondering, has there ever been a student that went from the program into the military? She said, that's what I'd like to do either after or even while I'm in college. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, Shimmer, and Schimler. And Easter. And Heaster, yes, uh, we've got a number of ex-military folks in the program. Uh, the post-9-11 GI Bill is very good, and so we've had a, a number of young men that have come through the program. We've also had two students who did the program and did um, uh, ROTC at the same time. Now, Finley, the University of Finley does not have ROTC, but Bowling Green State University, which is 22 miles north on I-75, they have ROTC, and our students go to Bowling Green for the ROTC. So um, uh, Mitch got, I don't know, three-quarters of his um, 
tuition paid for that he didn't have paid for through other scholarships by using the ROTC. And Andrew Heaster did as well. He had almost all of his uh, yeah. tuition. Now he was Andrew had Andrew had spent one tour duty uh, in the military and came out, and so the 9/11 GI Bill paid for him. Um, but other ones, actually, Heaster was spent 22 years in. Um, Johnson did a tour of duty, yes. and they paid for it. Um, but yes, it's quite possible, especially with the ROTC. And do you have any students who went, you know, graduated from the program and started into the military and doing something military-wise with, um, with the degree? We have. Uh, what's interesting is the military nowadays is paying civilians very well. And so they are in competition with the Fortune 100 companies to hire students as civilians. One of the things that um, I highly recommend is we are a EHAC accredited undergraduate program. Um, EHAC is an external accreditation body. Our students are getting wonderful jobs with the United States Public Health Service. The Public Health Service is a uniformed commission corps that is non-weaponized. Um, they're a uniform but they're non-military and so the students have been getting great jobs working for them and doing wonderful work uh, with CDC, with uh, Bureau of Indian Health, um, with uh, NIOSH, with the National Center of Environmental Health um, in Atlanta, just doing some wonderful things and they are uniform individuals so they respond to outbreaks of hunter virus and outbreaks of the avian flu, uh, swine flu, that type of thing, and they respond worldwide to those outbreaks. So it's not quite the military, um, but it's a very good service, and it is a uniform uh, health officer service, and there's some just some wonderful, very intelligent folks working for them. Um. Derek, why don't you tell us about the environmental organization, student organization? Um, OESHO is our uh, organization. It's kind of like our club get together uh, in the ESOH program. Um, you know, when you come to campus and they're telling you about uh, different student um, groups that you can join, like the Wilderness Club or the uh, Block and Block uh, and Bridal. Block, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have the OESHO uh, is is our club and. What's neat about it is not only is it ESOA students, but it is other students. And, um, you know, uh, I lived with uh, quite a few soccer players my freshman and sophomore year. I actually recruited all of them to join OE Show. And I think my freshman and sophomore year, we had well over uh, 80 people in our club. And it was a lot of fun. Not only do you do um, things like fundraisers and you go out to women's shelters and children's shelters and you help them out and uh, we do toys for tots and things like that, but you also go, uh, get to go out and do things like camping trips and ski trips, which we do every year, and they're a blast. Um, we travel um, uh, not only for, like I said, fundraisers, but we do just things for fun. Uh, we'll just randomly come up with a trip, we'll get funding, and you know everyone has to chip in a little bit of money and we'll take a trip together, and it's, it's always a lot of fun. Um, we're always involved in, on campus, and not to mention we've won, I think, every competition the last probably six years on campus. Not trying to brag, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, Part of the club, OESHO, Oiler Environmental Safety and Health Organization, are the service projects, which include uh, park cleanups, they include river cleanups, um, and as Derek said, a lot of the fun things at the same time get done. So it's always very nice to become involved in that because students need to remember that as a freshman, the seniors, by the time you're graduating, those seniors are in management positions and they're now hiring people. So it's always nice to start networking as a freshman. Can you can you go over OESHA again, kind of go over what the acronym stands for? Libby's acting. Can you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's O E. S-H-O, Euler Environmental Safety and Health Organization. And how is that connected with uh, the national organization, I guess? The, there are basically three different national organizations that that club can be affiliated with. There's the National Environmental Health Association, there's the American Society of Safety Engineers, and there's the American Industrial Hygiene Association. And so the club can be affiliated with any of those, 
or a student can just be a member of that national organization without belonging to the club. So it can work either way. And we do suggest to students that they become student members of those different organizations because there are a lot of scholarship money available. And one of the textbooks we use comes from AIHA. And if you pay your $10 fee, the textbook's $130. More than that now. $150. And if you don't pay the $10 membership fee, the textbook is $350. And the textbook's used in a couple of different classes. Yep. I've carried it through like three of my classes now. Yeah. It, it's worth the $150 because it's, you know, 20 pound textbook, I think. It's, <laughs> it's about ready to go to, to a two volume set. Um, but those national organizations are very helpful. It gets students' names put out there. Uh, we try to get students to both state and national conferences whenever possible, especially if those conferences are close by. There's a real big one in October that we're going to take a lot of students to. It's an international conference that's being held in Cincinnati this year, and it's about risk and exposure monitoring. So both environmental pollution exposure and workplace exposure. It's three days in Cincinnati. so. We're going to try and get a big group of students down there. Um, and then, why don't the both of you kind of talk about your experience at the University of Finley in general, not just with the environmental program, but as as a new student at the University of Finley, how did you feel you got acclimated to the atmosphere? Um, yeah, definitely. I started in 2009. Um, Finley was the only school I applied to. I knew I wanted to come here from the start. Um, like I said, I did animal science pre-vet, I was an equestrian, I did a little bit of everything, I got to know everybody. Um, I lived on campus my first year and second year, the dorms my freshman year, my second year I lived in on-campus housing with five other girls, that was wild, but it was fun. <laughs> um, and then after that I moved off campus, but the university offers a ton of on-campus activities. Um, we had a, oh, what was he? Um, Gosh, I forget what he he did the Hypn hypnotist. Uh, hypnotist. Yeah, he, he hypnotized people. Now I went up and on stage to get hypnotized, but I was so nervous about it, like I was resisting it and I could feel it. I was like, I'm not gonna let him do this to me. But it worked, he did. He hypnotized the students and they were doing crazy things on stage. Um, we have performers, movie nights, um, a lot of people complain about the dining hall, but I didn't. I mind it at all, and I'm a vegetarian, so you can understand. Like it, it's pretty good food. Don't let anybody tell you it's not. <laughs> um, what else? We just had the plain white teas here. What yeah. two weeks ago? Yep, and yeah. they played in our gymnasium, and it was a sold out show. Mm -hmm. and our basketball uh, games always get packed. We yep. have awesome basketball team and sports for almost everything else you can think of. We have women's lacrosse. Do we have men's lacrosse? Mm -hmm. It's our club, but it's not. Okay, sport. yeah, but uh, yeah, we have lacrosse, tennis, football, swimming. Um, so there's always tons of events you can go to sports-wise. They're all free. Yeah. For students. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I was a freshman, I came in in 09 as well, uh, same year as Ashley. Um, I lived on campus in the dorms my freshman year. My sophomore year, um, I lived in kind of like the dorm suites, which you get uh, to uh, move, move and look forward to your sophomore year. And then um, my junior year, I actually lived, um, it was kind of an idea that Dr. And Murphy and I threw together my sophomore year. We're like, you know, there's always these themed houses on campus. There's, you know, the animal science house. There's the pharmacy house. There's the fraternities and sororities. And, you know, all the people in those organizations or majors get to live together. Why can't we have an environmental safety house, you know? So we pulled it together. And sure enough, we came up with two environmental safety houses that were uh, next, to, next door to each other. And not only were they houses that um, were themed ESOH, but we now have a windmill and solar panels that power 70% of the electricity that goes into that house. It's really cool. Um, and so that was my junior year. And then the last few years, I have lived off campus in my own apartment with a, a roommate from BG. And that's a nice experience, too, because you get to learn how to budget your money very well. <laughs> and there's a lot of places right around the school that you can live considered off campus. Yep. And I believe now Finley has switched their policy over to junior year. You're allowed to move off campus, which is really cool because obviously you always want to live with your friends. And if, you know, sometimes the house, the on-campus house you wanted got taken early, 
Um, so it's there's always more opportunities that Finley is presenting. Um, but some of the other things that's really cool that uh, our campus does is we always have welcome week. So when you're a freshman, um, it is literally the first week is so jam packed with events and cool things to do. It's overwhelming, and they go till 11, 12 o'clock at night, and they start at you know noon the next day, and they'll have um, big foam pits, and they'll have you know sumo wrestling you can do, and they bring in all the blow up activities, and then also we'll have things like like big name comedians come through the school, and you get to on a Friday night instead of you know. Um, driving up to BG to visit your friend, you can stay on campus and take go with your friends from the university and go see an awesome comedian with three openers on it. And like Dr. Murphy said, we just had plain white tees here, you know. So we have big name stuff that comes through here, even though we're uh, a relatively small university. We have some awesome stuff that we could do. And if you're bored on a weekend, I'd be impressed because there's always something to do in Finley. Definitely, students say that they leave because there's nothing to do. Well, there's plenty to do, and so the more that students stay on campus on the weekends, the funner it is, because it's always fun to go to these events with a group of your friends, and it's always nice to make friends. I, I tell freshmen the same thing all the time. If you're in your dorm room, leave your door open. Meet friends. When people are walking by and they're talking about going out to play sand volleyball, say, hey, can I join you? And get up and put yourself out there and become friends with them. Because a lot of these people you'll be friends with for the rest of your life. Yep. I still have friends from college that I hang with as much as I possibly can, even though I've lived in eight different states since college, well, since my first college days, and uh, I'm still friends with them. So it's important to meet those folks now. I never wanted to leave on the weekends. I mean, granted, I'm from Pittsburgh, so it was a four and a half hour drive home, but I still, I had no desire to run home to my friends from high school or anything. Like, I was having a great time here when I first started school. Another one of my favorite parts is the rec center. We just updated it, too. Um, we got a new indoor track, like a small, like, running, jogging track. Um, and then we also have a 200-meter indoor track. But in that new updated area, we got a smoothie bar, a rock climbing wall. There's a brand new like free weight gym. And then we also have a cardio center. Um, I get a little intimidated by the free weight gym with all the big football players and stuff. But I really like to work out, so I usually end up at the cardio center. Like that's where more less um, athletically inclined people go. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna agree with Ashley. Um, I actually was a national swimmer before I came here even though I gained a few pounds now. But I was a national swimmer before I came here, and I wasn't a free weight person. I was a, I, I used the, uh, you know, I swam. I didn't, I didn't work out uh, besides swimming. So when I came here, you know, we, and we do have a swimming pool with open hours, I didn't want to swim anymore, but I still wanted to keep that, that workout flow going. So, you know, we do have two tracks that we can run to. We do have a cardio center that we can go bike at, bike at. And then something else that was like the, the founding, uh, the brick to start all my relationships in college was intramural sports. I played so many intramural sports. We have dodgeball, soccer, I mean anything, sand volleyball, and that is literally how I met all of my friends. Uh, honestly, the mo I had friends in my dorm, but most of my friends were in other dorms because I met them through intramural sports, and they are a blast. And you play games, uh, you know, anywhere from one to three games a week. And there's no cost to sign up, and then there's tournaments. You win free stuff. You win fifty dollar gift cards to the smoothie bar and T-shirts. And that's another thing. We have an unlimited amount of free clothes at the university. I have a separate section. I have a walk-in closet in the place I live in now, and I have a whole separate section of just Finley T-shirts and sweatpants. It seems to bring people out. You say free T-shirt, and they just flock to like whatever event they're having. And it's for oh, it's nearly for almost every event, and there's almost an event every other day. Yeah. I probably have well over 60 t-shirts. <laughs> um, Libby is asking, um, are there any internships in national parks to kind of switch gears here a little bit? Yeah, Eric did one. His there are. Um, the internships at both the state and the federal facilities are all posted online. They don't send those to us. They just put them out. So whether it's a city or county, health department or park, uh, same with the state, same with the feds, those are all out there and those are available. They're kind of hit and miss really based on funding. The federal ones can dry up fairly quickly depending upon the budget year. They're really relying on um, 
actually on senior citizens to do volunteer work. Um, if you're looking for park, think more of a state park uh, because those typically um, don't go away. The states have better funding for those. Um, so those are definitely out there, and there are plenty of them. I don't know if you're interested in like wildlife and animals to combine with an ESOH major, Libby, but like I said, I graduated with animal science, and I'm planning on using that with my environmental master's degree um, to go work with animals and work for the environment. Um, I would like to do something maybe in animal waste management or sustainable agriculture, so there's no limit to what you can do with an environmental major on top of what you're interested in. Well, is there anything else that you guys would like to add? Uh, one of the things we were talking about, the remodeled cardio center, another uh, workout area that they have over there is the martial arts area. Uh, the University of Finley has a martial arts club that teaches Kempo, Karate, and Jiu Jitsu. Uh, they meet twice a week uh, in the evenings. They bring in um, nationally ranked uh, people to come in and give presentations, demonstrations, and head up workouts in both modern arnis, which is stick and knife fighting, and uh, competitive uh, grappling events. So it's a good way for students to learn self-defense. And then on top of that too, uh, there's uh, more. There's a there's a few more I've noticed. Even more female-driven cardio classes. Like they have the Zumba, and uh, I think the last time I was walking through the cardio center and Zumba was going on, there had to be a hundred people on that. They fill the whole floor. It's, it's wild. Yeah, it's, <laughs> but it's cool too. I mean, they have dance classes that you can do, and all different types of. It's, you'd never believe the stuff they incorporate with exercise and fun. <laughs> <laughs> lots, of it, lots. Yeah. Of it. Okay, well, let's let's do a, a last call for questions. So if, if anyone has any questions that's still out there, if you want to either tweet us or write a question here on the Hangout, we will answer that. And then let's just have some closing remarks from everyone here. If you want to go ahead, I'll let you start. Oh, uh, well, all in all, um, I'm going to be graduating here in May, and as much as excited I am to get out of the university and go into my real world job and you know get get my real life started I'm gonna miss it more than anything because this this is where this is where my future started like it was it was the new beginning for me um, so when you do go to college and if you do choose the university and if you do choose the ESOH program um, take take it by the reins and go 125 percent because if you don't you're gonna miss out on so many opportunities and there was a time and place in my college career where I didn't want to go 100 percent and I it was only for like a month or two and I regret it every day not going 110, 120 percent uh, every single day and and now um, I'm looking at moving to California and you know having a job that's salaried at starting at ninety two thousand dollars and I couldn't be more happy but at the same time like I said I'm so sad to be leaving my friends here and all the opportunities that were presented to me here at the university and the SOH program is the way to go I have to agree with Derek. I would not change anything about my decision to come to Finley. Um, making all those different choices and changing majors was just a part of the learning process. And whatever you decide, you will it'll come out right. You'll you'll find your calling. You'll figure it out. Um, I'm so glad I came to Finley. It's been like family since I started. I still say hi to the recruiter that recruited me first thing in high school. So you'll meet the people, your friends of your life. You'll never forget your professors. It's a really awesome school. Um, I came here in 97 to do my master's degree. I had been out on the road for 18 years doing public health work and doing emergency response to chemical and biological incidents. Um, fell in love with the university, fell in love with the town. Um, they hired me to work in their training group. I did my PhD at Ohio State while I was doing the training group and then uh, I moved over to the academic side. I love what I do. I want to change it. Um, I enjoy working with the students on a daily basis. As I said before, my goal is to make it all a family and a team um, and that's what the University of Finley is all about. Um, and I think that students who come here and as Derek said, apply themselves and take full advantage of everything we have to offer, 
just really, really, really enjoy it and then go on to a wonderful career. And just to add on one little last comment um, about going 110%, whether it's you, your grandparents, your parents, your guardian, whoever's, whoever's paying for school, um, just know that every minute that you waste not taking 110% is a dollar wasted. Um, and there's a number somewhere online, and you can break it down yourself, as to what you spend per day on class, whether it's at a community college or a private university. And just imagine those dollars wasted, skipping class or, or, or not going to a club meeting or anything like that. If you go 110%, you're getting your money's worth, and that's what the university is about. And just make sure you go 110%. That's all I can stress because, like I said, there was a time and place where about a month or two, I just... I didn't think I wanted to to you know be in college. It wasn't my thing. And Dr. Murphy basically was like, "Wake up, Derek!" And I woke up, and I was like, "Okay, yeah, I need to get a career. Let's go. You know, let's let's get this rolling." So, and I couldn't be happier where I'm heading now. So, if you come to the university, make sure you stay on your professor's side. Make sure you go 110 percent. Okay, well, we will have this on our YouTube channel. Um, if you search the University of Finley on YouTube, we'll have that on our YouTube channel. We'll be sharing this out on Facebook and Twitter, um, and then we'll be emailing it out to all the students who have applied or sh shown any interest in our envi environmental program um, here at the University of Finley. So we appreciate you sticking around with us, and have a good night.